So we completely got rid of all the information in the third dimension, we just used the x and y coordinate and we want to find a triangulation there and that then tells us how we want to interpolate. But there is not a unique triangulation, there are several ones. So let's go back to the original problem. We have our two-dimensional coordinates, but for every point, every side, we also know what is the height. Now we can have, for example, this triangulation, or we can have this. They differ in this one edge. If I want to do the height interpolation now in these two triangulations, let's say I want to look at this point. Which height do the two interpolations give me? Here I would interpolate on the red edge, so between these two sides. This one is approximately in the middle, here the height is 980, 990, so here it would give me 985. Here it's um, approximately in the middle between the 10 and the 36, so here it would give me height 23. And this is a huge difference. 985 and 23, that's not even closely the same. But which of those two do you think is more probable that it's correct? Well, it's clearly this one on the left here. For one, because this edge is much shorter than this one. This is a very long edge. And also, if you look at this, it seems like there is a long mountain or hill that's uh, going on between two valleys. So it's very unlikely that the mountain stops exactly here, where we stopped recording the height, and then starts again here. Here it would mean that it goes down completely and then goes up again. So this is much more likely. So we want to find a triangulation where the points we get from interpolation are as good as possible or as likely as possible to be true. And for that, if you look at these two triangles that we have here, and these two triangles that we have here, these ones are very skinny, they are very flat. And this is much closer to a regular triangle. And a regular triangle is much more likely to give us a correct interpolation. So what we want to do is we want to avoid those skinny triangles that we have here. And how do we measure how skinny a triangle is? That we can do by looking at the angles. Here we have very small angles, and here we have larger ones. So we want to find a triangulation that is angle optimal, where the angles are as large as possible. But there are many angles here. How do I compare if these two small ones, these two small ones, here I have two larger ones, but then I also have these four instead of these two, it's not so clear exactly how I compare between true triangulations how large the angles are. Especially because the sum of the angles shall be exactly the same in both triangulations. So oh, there has to be some other way to compare it. And for that we want to use the so-called angle vector of a triangulation. So let's say we have some point set and we have some triangulation and there are m triangles in this triangulation then the angle vector is just a vector of all the angles that we have in this triangulation, but sorted non-decreasingly. So alpha 1 is the smallest angle in this triangulation, and alpha 3m is the largest one. We have m triangles, so there are 3m angles. For example, this is a very good triangulation. Here all the angles have degree 60. And now we say that one triangulation is better or it's larger than another triangulation, for example this one here, if we compare the angle vectors. So we go through the angle vectors from left to right and in the beginning they might still be the same, but at some point we find an angle that is larger in the first triangulation than in the second one. In this example it's already the first one. The smallest angle here is 60 degrees, the smallest angle here is 30 degrees. That means that this is a better triangulation for us. And then the best triangulation is the angle optimal triangulation. And angle optimal we define such that there is no other triangulation that is better. So we have a way to compare two triangulations and figure out which one is the better one. But how do we find an angle optimal triangulation? We can still calculate a triangulation somehow, but then 
if I have one that's not optimal, somehow I have to move on and find a better one from that. And now we want to figure out how we can do that, how we can iterate over triangulations and keep on improving until we find the angle optimal one.